there are a couple of katas out there that are based around um, uh, games where there's odd scoring. And part of the idea behind them is you create a class or an algorithm around producing the score based on what look like simple inputs, but that, but that result in odd looking scores coming out. Um, and one of those uh, that um, uh, uh, the two uh, sort of most well-known versions of that are uh, the one for scoring a bowling game and the one for reporting the scores in a tennis game. Um, and uh, part of that comes about because um, tennis as a game um, has some fairly simple rules. Uh, has some fairly simple rules, uh, but the way that scores are represented is odd. And if, if, you're, if you're sort of not used to it, it can seem really strange if you watch a tennis match. Um, anyone here not familiar with how tennis is scored? That's not maybe, that's not maybe, okay. Um, uh, basically, uh, the simple answer is tennis is a game where uh, uh, players score points. The first player to four points with at least a two point differential wins. So if you get to four, but it's four versus three, that's not a two point differential, the game's not over yet. That person would have to get to five, three, right? Well, if you keep trading points back and forth, a tennis match can kind of go on for like hour. Um, uh, and then uh, in addition to that, the way scores are reported is kind of whacked, where the, for no points, um, each player has a score of love. Uh, for one point, a player has a score of 15. For two points, a score of 30. For three points, a score of 40. Um, and then they stop telling you what the score is. Right, so the match could go to like 17 to 19, right, but you never see that, right? They literally stop telling you what the score is. Um, and then for weird things, if, if the score is tied, right, um, instead of love, love, it's love all, right, or 15 all or 30 all. Um, oddly enough, there is no 40 all just because. Um, so, <clears throat> So the way this was originally structured, um, uh, it's, it's actually traditionally structured as a refactoring kata, where you're given three implementations of the tennis game score. Are we getting bleed over sound? Speakers. Is it the speakers? Yeah, somebody is. Are you playing? It's like someone in another room. Oh. It's hissing really loud. Well, so. Yeah. I don't necessarily see the control of the kind of speakers. I don't think I can easily I'll figure out what to that. Might be able to do that. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, so uh, we're, we're gonna take a look at the, the three examples of the clash you're supposed to refactor after I'm done. Because it turns out this doesn't actually take very long to do, um, but I think the shape of the solution, so I, I, I wasn't sure I was gonna do a build of the kata or a refactoring, but since Jason's whole thing is about refactoring, I focused on doing the build, um, and I think the build that I end up with looks kind of interesting compared to the three samples that you're given that you're asked to refactor. Um, so we're gonna, we'll, we'll um, go through the build really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a tennis class. Uh, you instantiate the class with two players. Uh, each player has a name and some number of points. And then you ask, the, you ask the instantiated tennis class, what's the score output for this particular thing? Um, and it's supposed to report the correct score output. Um, and so as a helper, is this big enough for people to see this? We'll do that. Uh, as a helper, I created a little stand-in class for a player um, as a little struct so that I can have um, a thing with name and points. Um, and at a, at a very basic level, oh, thank you, you don't think you're, uh, cups of wax, that's it, right? Um,
So this is sort of basically what we want, right? And uh, So in, in, in sort of really rapid succession, this is the idea behind the first test. Um, this is kind of the idea behind what almost all the tests are going to look like. Um, and uh, obviously, if we run this, we get errors because uh, our tennis class is empty. Did you intend to call the players one and two? Uh, thank you. I did. That would have come up very quickly, but good catch. test, we find out that we need a score method now. Um, and we know that if we just return the thing, so obviously that doesn't really tell us anything. Um, This should help us drive out. rapidly starts to become a pretty easily identifiable pattern, right? Um, so rather than do that, let's do a little quick refactoring here. So uh, we're going to grab the two scores and we want the output to be for those scores and then use them in a, in a single it block, right? So that actually covers this case, right? Um, thank you. Uh, and so the idea then is, Do the similar thing, right? Where we 
grab this whole thing here. And that's a one. Right? But obviously, this is just another pattern. So let's see if we can clean this up some. Um, I've gone through this a couple times and I've come up with a couple of different ways of doing it and the way that seemed to work the best for me is a conversion mechanism. Okay. Um, make sure we have the points. So uh, in, in a real sense we can kind of do this. Um, and then right if we return the result of that now I've got a little thing that converts from the points I care about into at least part of the word that's going to result in the output um, and that allows me to actually do something like this where uh, I could do Thing as a single string concatenation, theoretically. Right, well that works except for the all case. Right, so we, we still actually have to check and see um, a little bit about the all case. So, so let's split some things up really quickly here. So let's say that we're going to start with that. And then we're going to concatenate onto this. make it a little bit shorter in just a second here. But basically what I'm saying is, if the points are the same, then instead of the result from the conversion, we want all. Um, and if I run this, um, apparently everything breaks. Well, it turns out the reason everything breaks is the evaluation of this clause gets a little messed up. Okay, um, that works. Um, which means I can get rid of all of those crazy conditionals. And then we're going to do one quick thing here. There we go. So that's a little bit easier to read. So, back to the test grind. Um, we don't have the other numbers, so let's work on the other numbers. Yes. Uh, the comma at the end of 10. Where? The comma at the end of line 10. This? Uh, that, that comment does, that comment doesn't matter. It's like you have an end at the bottom, but that comment it out. 
So it this literally tells us what the problem is. So that gives us all of the reportable scores, and now things start to get kind of interesting. Um, the first interesting case is actually this one. Because this one is not this. Okay? In tennis parlance, it's this. And what Deuce represents, in addition to representing a tie, Deuce represents almost like a mode that a tennis match goes into. So if you achieve Deuce, you don't leave Deuce until the game ends, right? And Deuce has two states, the Deuce state and the advantage state, right? So those are the two special cases that we need to cover. Um, and then we can actually get to how do you actually win one of these things. Um, so if we try to do this, right, uh, we get 40 all, right? Well, 40 all isn't the thing. So uh, so this is part of it, but this isn't all of it, because a deuce is a tied state. Um, where the combined scores of both players is greater than five, right? So you need to be at least three, three or higher and be tied. And just to complicate things, for winners and advantages, we identify the player, not the score. Um, obviously, this will fail because it's going to try and do a lookup. And we don't really want that lookup to happen. Um, um, so this is going to get a little messy in terms of how we need to return the info. So. Um, I'm going to say this if uh, yeah, this kind of works. Um, right, this is kind of a hack. It, it it's 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 right, but it um, it's only right because we're going to structure things to make it right in in a minute. Um, but let's. Move that be. Let's try and figure out what this is. Um, so the way that I figured out how to solve this kind of quickly, and this is kind of a fun Ruby trick um, if we have our two players in a collection we can actually figure out which one has the higher score really easily Over it, and we're going to say 
uh, I, want, I want you to return to me the object who has the highest points value on you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, this is our last sort of special is case, which is acts of the person one. Um, obviously, if we try and do this right now, uh, it's confused because it thinks it's supposed to show um, advantage, and we don't actually want that. Um, this is another really hairy condition, um, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, Uh, so I'm going to define a couple of methods here. One of the nice things is it turns out that winner score and advantage score are very similar. We're going to get back to that in a minute. Okay. So the the winnable conditions says at least one of our players has achieved four points and that player is ahead by two. Okay. Well, um, it turns out we don't actually care which player is ahead by two. All we care about is, is the point differential two or greater? And at least one of our players has a score of four. Um, so what we're going to do is we will start with the points and now we can just use standard max So we check to see if we have a player with at least a score greater than three. And then we check to see if the differential between the two players' points, um, and since we don't know which is higher, we use this to get the absolute value. And we look to see, is that delta greater than one? Um, and if I got that right, which it looks like I don't, you have to put I in <laughs> I can't spell, it's fine. Um, there we go. So it turns out that obviously this is used identically. So we're going to do this. that then there's no real reason for that method. Let me just do this. Yes? Yes. Okay. So that's kind of good. good. Um, there's still a lot of this.
All right, so what do you think? That's, that's looking a little better. Running, running up, running up against the against the thing. There's a couple more things that I could do to to get. I can get this down to one more line, but um, rather than do that, uh, the original kata came with this whole set of test cases. Why don't we see how good we're doing? That's my whole set. That huge set. And then we'll run the whole thing. There you go. Nice. There you go. Um, and as I said, for, for fun, so like I said, it's originally a refactoring kava. Um, they produced three versions of it. Um, they had another thing where they said you should figure out who won the point. This is kind of stupid. I don't see why this is here. Um, uh, all we really care about is what, which player has what points, and then <coughs> ask it what the score of the game is. The, the rest is kind of just like sort of weird machinations that I don't really understand why it's there. But the important thing here is, in fact, the score method. Um, here's that first crack at the score method. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of the if-elses. This one's three levels in before it happens. This one's even longer. I figured they tried to figure out what was the craziest they could come up with. <laughs> um, and then, then they went the other way and they figured out um, what's the most sort of pearl golf-like one we could come up with. Um, I, I kind of like mine. <laughs> Call me crazy. Um, you know, in less than 50 lines, it sort of intentionally tells you exactly what it's doing at each stage. I mean, aside from the fact that I think this and this could be extracted into into another method, um, and you could potentially name both sides of this and the condition, um, this seems pretty clear to me. Um, awesome. Yeah, I said it was 25 minutes originally, yeah. so we could have like a minute or two of questions. And yeah, if you, like, if you like questions, I can, I can put it back up. Um, um, but the algorithm ends up being really, really simple because it and it really is just a, a brief replacement thing with a couple of conditionals. Well, I had one tiny comment. You you could have used dot concat if you don't like having parentheses around that that the last line of score. This here? Yeah, because I think concat is just the same thing as the last line less than method. Oh, I see. Just I see. Yeah. Um, I, what I actually did was is I uh, in my in one of the versions I did I took this and this and extracted them into a different method because um, they're. They're, they're encapsulating some business logic themselves. Um, and when I did that, uh, I was able to actually express this whole thing inside of a, uh, an interpolated block there that does the right thing because it evaluates the whole block before it actually does anything with it. Um, and that, that got me down to a four line score method and slightly tighter code. Uh, but yeah, I, I actually never used Comic Con. Oh. Um, I know about it, I just never used it. Is that, is that an alias for push <coughs> on an array? Because less than less than, I think, is an alias for push. Yeah, less than less than, less than is, an is, an alias, is, an is an alias for push, which also has an alias of plus sort of. Um, plus is a little, a little different. Yeah, yeah Concat is on strings. I don't think it's on array. Oh, right. And less than less than is not the same as push. Less than less than takes one argument and puts it at the end of the array. Mm -hmm. Push can take multiple arguments and puts them all at the end. So you can actually splat an array.